Well, welcome back, everybody, to another edition of uh, Heads Up. And uh, it's the, the week after a fantastic weekend of racing, especially at Ellerslie last week. And yeah, there were only six races go. Uh, good to see you. And uh, you were there. Just uh, watching it on TV, the atmosphere just seemed terrific. What was it like actually being there? Yeah, good morning, Neil. Ah, it was in another epic race day the Ellerslie Club put on, Auckland Racing Club. You look back at the results, you go, oh, well, that was pretty easy. Four favourites, two second favourites. Everyone should have made lots of money. Well, as you know, the boys get paid. Punders Club only really came out square, give or take. So, you know, it was it was a good day. Uh, some mm-hmm. terrific performances. You'd have to say Levante was the performance of the night. Just her dazzling turn of foot and ability to accelerate uh what sort of sectional did she run from the 400 to the 200, Neil? Do you know? Um, they weren't outstanding, but her four splits from the 800 in were all sort of around 11 seconds uh, from memory. But, gee, they were just terrific. But I think, like you and many others, we sort of thought, gee, with about 600 metres to go, she was being scrubbed up and looked a bit flat. But uh, once she unwound, you just knew she was going to get over um, those our alley cap and family in front, obviously. So just great to see. But I, I reckon one of the, the best one of the night was in the first race that need I say more. It's just a terrific one. Yeah, one. with 60 and a half kilos, didn't go forward like many expected, and uh, unleashed down the outskirts of the track again. Yeah, no, that was a good run. Yeah. Surprised me. I didn't think he was a good value at 220. I think he drifted to 270, but. Uh, no, he was too good. And your value bet should have listened to you, perhaps, Neil. Tiptronic race two led all the way. You'd cleaned up there, That's cleaned me up with Aegon beating Amaralina. Yeah, but you got on the bubble, so you've been confident it was going to win, too. You weren't worried about, you worried about that wide draw, were you? Just a fantastic ride from Jay Parks. Yeah, two year olds. Good two year olds can overcome those things. Interesting because was it a strong field? Time will tell, but the time won 10.7. No, yeah, allowing the fact that they're two year olds and babies, nothing outstanding. And they're on the bubbles to win from that wide draw and won, won really well. But, um, I can't see a lot of good horses coming out of that based on the time and sectionals. Western Springs was a good run matched the run home sectional of on the bubbles in the last 200 metres. But what are your thoughts about any thoughts about strength of that field? Mm, without wanting to be too disrespectful, uh, yes, tend to agree with you, Neil. I highly doubt the winner of the cracker three-year-old mile next year will be in would have been in that race uh, last week. So, But, hey, you got to have a throw at the stumps when the million dollars is up for grabs and a lot of those horses oh, yeah. have been purchased out of the sale to run in that race and they have a crack. Um, but yeah, saying yeah. that, you look at uh, Melody Bell, Avon Targe, Probabil, probably our three best female gallopers uh, in the country all won that race. So they might surprise us, yes. but time will tell. But yeah, I do tend right. to agree with you. But based on the times and sectionals, you would say you'd have doubts anyway. But it just come back to Levante. His next start's going to be against Avantage at Tirapa in North, two weeks now. Um, it's going to be a great race to watch. Over 1,400 metres. My feeling is I was all over Levante after that one. I went back and looked at the run again, and I thought, does she need more ground? Um, you know, Avantage is going to be a few lengths in front of her. It's just going to be such an intriguing race. Any thoughts there? Or? Uh, at this point in time? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I'll okay, go Levante. I think she's pretty special. Yes. And of course, of course, Avantage is special too, but I just think, you know, that Telegraph, oh, not Telegraph, Railway, uh, another 200 metres, I think Levante would have caught Avantage. Oh, uh, yeah. But hey, ifs and buts, there's a lot of variables in horse racing. That's one of the reasons why we love it so much. Right. Um, but yeah, no, at this point in time, I just think Levante uh, is the one for that race, but we could well be wrong. You never know. I might try and get to that race. I'm looking forward to that. 
the um, race we missed out was race five on Trivia. That was just a terrific one. And um, I put up a suggested first four, and I know a few subscribers took it. And we got first, second, and third, and fifth, and sixth. And I'll tell you what, we were damn unlucky with Festivity and Princess Rihanna. They were both unlucky. Rock and a fair lead and, and held on for fourth. $34,000 that first four paid. Yeah. I don't know if it would have paid that much with Festivity. No. It would have with Princess Rihanna. It would have been like $50,000. And, um, no, we were you know, there, but that's racing. Yeah. She's definitely the next uh, rising star, isn't she, from the Tiaki Alban on Trivia? Yeah. Not well placed in the ratings uh, on the weight scale based on her rating, but she blew them away. So that was a pretty pretty dominant win again. So yeah. uh, another horse that's definitely going places. Yeah. And, um, and as we mentioned Aegon and Amarillo. That was just a terrific race. I was, I was waiting to, before I had a good go at Aegon to see how he looked. Before the start, and he looked fit enough to me. Amarina looked terrific, but I thought Aegon just looked fit enough. That was a question mark, wasn't it? Was he fit enough to be able to run a strong mile fresh up? Just great great training. training performance, you'd have to say, wasn't it? From uh... right. just amazing, eh? Baker and yeah. Forsman, just terrific trainers. But, um... Pretty good judge of a thoroughbred, Andrew Forsman. And he bought a few horses for the. Zame family, and yeah, they've come up with John Snow, Rhaegar, and Aegon. I think he's only bought four or five, and there's three of them. Yeah. And two of them are going to be million dollar plus earners. So, pretty impressive uh, yeah. ability there to find one in this sale yard for yeah. young Mr. Forsman. We didn't mention uh, Montre Moir in that race, too. Came home in, in a really good sectional on target for the, the Derby, for the sounds of it, at least all three times. So. Yeah, yep, no, that was a good run as well. No, all up, it was a great night. Um, always a great buzz on course and uh, just a pleasure to be a part of, really. And then yeah. carried on at the sales the next few days. There's plenty going on there despite the situation they found themselves in. So uh, it's been a big old week, I have to say, Neil. It's kind of good just to yeah. come home and have a bit of rest before right. getting into it again tomorrow. Yeah, good freshen up there. And uh, you were fresh last week's races to get now. So on to bigger bigger races tomorrow. Well, big races tomorrow. Race seven, the Thorndon Mile. Um, not a big field, but um, two or three quality horses on there. Melody Bell, Rock on Wood, the Mitigator won it last year. Shadows Cast, Deerfield, Cinerama, all good horses, aren't they? So Yeah, small but select field, you'd say. Hmm. Probably if... They had a choice of barrier draw. The last draw they'd probably want for Melody Bell would be barrier one, and that's what she's drawn. So that adds a little bit of an extra dimension into the race. Could she get blocked for a run? There's a small field. She'd be able to find a way out of trouble, especially with Opie Boston on board. Rock on Wood won the Captain Cook, same distance, same track, some eight weeks ago now. What do you reckon? I reckon you might be swaying towards rock on wood, just the feeling I've got in your voice. <laughs> yeah, well, you mentioned that, that draw, and that's the crucial part. And if these jockeys are on to it, and I'm pretty sure they will be, then they, she's the biggest danger. The speed map says the mitigator leads out. Deerfield comes out and may take the lead off the mitigator. What does that do to Melody Bell? It puts her three back in her. Huh? With Rock on Wood and Shadows Cast, well, Shadows Cast probably coming over second out, and Rock on Wood and one by one, putting Melody Bell three back in it. So I reckon um, Melody Bell dollar fifty five. I just couldn't back it at that price. But Rock on Wood two dollars twenty five to win or money back second does look the best bet for me. It really does. You know, he won, when he like I mentioned that Captain Cook, he won that three wide in the open off the pace, came out wide and just kicked their backside. So, And the horse that ran second in that race came out and won a group one at its next start, Concert yeah. Hall. Yeah, and Rock on would, would have beaten her, I reckon, if he'd got a clear run. So we know how good he is and he can run a fantastic sectional. So I reckon 225 on the win insurance is the way to go there. So I'm just trying to, I'm thinking off the top of my head here. Mm -hmm. Melody Bell's won 12 group ones. 
One of those was at Flemington. Yep. Uh, one at Palmy in the size produce. So it leaves 10. Have the other 10 all been at Hawke's Bay? I'm trying to think. Yeah. I think they probably have. Something like that. How was uh, Hastings? Hastings, yeah, three in a row at Hastings, obviously. Yeah. Trent them different track. Hey, shouldn't trip her up, but it's not it's not Hawks Bay with a track where we know she just goes so well at. Yeah. So there's a few things that you could find as negatives, um, but hey, we know she's absolute top draw yeah, material. Right. Yeah. But rock on wood. You know, if he had a bit more luck on his side, he probably would have won three group ones, maybe four group ones by now. So he's no mug. Yeah. And I think, um, talk to the query, Melody Bell, any horse fetch up over a mile. Um, that trial was was okay. She was beaten by Amarillina, who got beaten by Aegon Ellerslie. But you've got to factor in the Yarkow factor. They do get a lot of improvement out of a trial run. But Rock on Wood, he maps to get the ideal run here, one by one, uh, fourth or fifth out of, and um, Melody Bell hopefully is trapped away if you're on Rock on Wood. If you looked at it from a um, law of averages, surely Rock on Wood can't have more bad luck again. So maybe today's or tomorrow is his day. So yeah. Yeah, 225, I'd just be back in the 360, just go all in, Neil. I mean, I'll wait until the day moves on. So I'm picking, I'm picking Melody Bell will come in more. The same pundits. She's into a dollar fifty now, I see. Yeah, and Rockin' Wood drift out. Dollar forty five, actually. She, she's Rockin'. just just moved in the last since we started talking. Dollar forty five, Rock and Wood's gone out to fours. Yeah. So your win insurance. Let's see what your win insurance is doing now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are we? When it showing? was 225. 240. 240. It's got to be a good bet. It's got to be a good bet. Um, the Cup. My, yeah. Wellington Cup race nine. Yeah. Good race. You like it? Pretty average race, let's be honest. Oh, it is, but we haven't got... It's a, it's a race. It's a punter's race, isn't it? I mean, you got Waisaki 320, but then your second favourite's out to about 850. So if you like one outside of Waisaki, yeah. you're going to get well rewarded, aren't you? Yeah, true, right. Um, a bit of speed in the race, so it's going to be a pretty evenly run race, I think. So maybe how we should get the advance, but uh, just bring it up here. Um, the one of, one of Waisaki here in the first day was, was terrific, I thought, even though it was an R74 race. He got back, he relaxed well. I actually watched the stewards' vision on the Love Racing site. He just relaxed beautifully. When, when, um, so, uh, Hazel. Hazel. Hazel asked him to go. He just got out, took him a few strides to get going, but once he got out in the open air, he just put his head down. Actually, he, he reminds me of a horse that won the Melbourne Cup that we all have heard of before. I think that horse won the Wellington Cup as well, didn't it? Oh, he did too. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Here we, yeah, no, he's he's a, he's that sort of horse, just relaxes nicely, very economical stride, good strong shoulder, gets his head down and just goes. Um you know, it's 320 up in class, you've got to factor in the Alan Sherrick factor, don't you? Plus the fact a lot of these horses have been going round forever and ever, and he's on the up peaking. Pretty sure Sherrick would have aimed him at this race. Long time ago, he hasn't won this race before, has he? No, that is one race missing from his resume, Mister Sherrick. Mm. But uh, he knows how to set a race, a set a horse for a big race, and he gets in on the bottom weight. But his rating, if this was a handicap, he'd still be um, what well, is a handicap? But he'd still be if it wasn't as compressed yeah. in the weights, he'd still be getting more weight from some of the other horses that he meets at equal weights today, just the way the scale is with the horses in the race. So there's a few negatives about him. I don't know. I, I just got this feeling he's not going to win. Uh, well, favourites don't have a great record in the race. Two of the last 14 yeah. winners have been favourites. So 
Don't ask me why. I just got a feeling he's not going to win. I probably won't even back him because he is too short. But if I'm picking, he might even drift out to maybe four dollars come the start. Because like you said, there's a few uh, horses and you know, proven stars. Robusto, the good fight, two good stars, Dragon Storm. They're all proven stayers, so they may actually come for those later on. May drift. So, make a big... so what are you keen on then? Well, that's the problem. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't uh, know. I don't know. So uh, that's sort of right. even just the maze, you'd think he'll go forward and put some pressure in. So it's kind of. I would have thought Super Hoof would lead. Um, yeah, he must I, go t- forward. I tell you what. There you go. That'll be my absolute blowout. Super Hoof to lead all the way in the Wellington Cup. Okay. There's one for us. Okay. Stranger, Stranger things have happened, mate. Yeah. I liked them on a VC a few starts back at Tirapa. She was unlucky, got back, held up, hit the line really well, and has sort of gone okay since. But if you're training a horse for two miles, that's how they sort of finish off, just sort of plodding towards the line. So VC for a roughie. So VCC, yep. Yeah. VCC, yep. Yeah. VCC, what did I say? VC, yeah. The VCC, uh, we'll take that trifecta actually. VCC, Super Hoof, and Wasaki. Yeah, you'd need a few more, I'm sure, but... No, you never know. You never know. It's it's while the quality of horse flesh running might not be up to previous years, I'm sure the crowd will be excited. It's a two mile race. They uh, come past the stands the first time, and T Lee gets the crowd racked up, and they give a big cheer. And I'm sure uh, everyone will be right into the spirit of it. And then they come down the straight the second time, fighting it out. And it's going to be fascinating to see who comes out on top. I think another stat I heard. Something like eight of the last 10 Wellington Cups have been decided by a length or less. So it's often a very tight and close finish. Yeah. So it'll be uh, interesting. Well, wait. Actually, there's a horse racing at Trenton tomorrow that I always get at least two or three texts sometimes more about. Um, ask the goat. What does the goat say about Gerda? Is it going to win today? How's it going to go? So... Well, really we, haven't, we haven't talked about it before its last few starts, so hopefully yeah. they've worked it out by now. Yeah. Um, well, race five, just up, yeah. up to a distance. Here's uh, it's changed again in price. I must be updating their prices while we're talking. Uh, into five dollars now, yeah, with a scratching of Fleur bus. Oh, hey, it's stepping up in distance. Normally, you like horses to have one run over a distance before backing them. I think she's ready to run. Uh, 2100 work's been very good. Trainer's quietly confident. The one draw could be a hindrance, like it was last start, where she couldn't really get rolling at the right time. But mm. if the gaps come and she gets into the right part of the track, wherever that might be, yeah, um, she's good enough to win that race. So I certainly wouldn't be telling you not to back her. Yeah, no, she's um, got the ability, I think. So I'm just checking now. Uh, last week the inside was was off, wasn't it, at Trenton? That yeah, yeah the rail's gone out again. I think yeah, three meters. Yeah, yeah, three meters. I see. So that's that's a good idea. So that should even it up a wee bit. Yeah, you'd hope so. Yeah, yeah. you just never know. Yeah. But no, no, hey, it's it's a race. She could win. Be nice, yeah. forty thousand dollars stake. Yeah. Now, uh, sports bet this week. You're gonna hang off. No, we've been very diligent this year, Neil. That was all part of the plan. We will have a bet for the Super Bowl next week. So the Super Bowl is on Monday the 8th. So we'll do the podcast next Friday and we'll have a bet uh, lined up for that. So just hold fire. I know you're chomping at the bit, Neil, but we want to make sure that we get a 20% return on investment over the course of the year this year with our sports bets. So, you know the old rule, yep. be selective. Yep, good plan. And uh, I, might, I might mention too, David's doing a great job with the Greyhound selections. Yeah, good profit on turnover. And uh, it's mainly because he's doing his, spending the time analysing the sectionals for those four tracks. The information is there. It's not public. It should be public. He wants to make it public, but GRNZ don't seem interested. So... He's getting stuck in. Subscribers are getting stuck in, making plenty of money, and we're going to make sure they 
understand that sectionals can make you money. Anyway, well done, David. Um, right, last week's question was, which horse did John O'Benner train when the Karaka Millions? And the answer was? Vespa. Yeah. yeah. Course, I still remember the scenes of where he was doing somersaults virtually in the bird cage up of the race, he and Holly. So. Yeah, I think, didn't they race, wasn't they run in a, basically a big downpour? I think it either just rained right on the race time or just before, I think. But no, he, he won that pretty convincingly, old Vespa. He's now yeah. doing his uh, bit in the breeding barn, siring a few horses here and there. Um, nine people, was it, Neil, that got yeah, that? Nine people. Give me a number between one and nine. Uh, we'll go seven. Seven. Bruce, uh, all the way from down south. Um Good on you, Bruce. I'll post your bet up by uh, noon tomorrow. See if we can get that in order. I think last time he won, he won it. We yeah, that does ring a bell now. We yeah. got we got enough money in the coffers for a Hope so. bet next week. <laughs> sure you have with all those Greyhound winners you're backing. Simple question. What year did the Wellington Cup revert back to two miles after the 2400 metre experiment? So it's Recent history, what year did the Wellington Cup revert back to being a two-mile race? Text or email your answers through to Neil by what, Tuesday, Monday, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday night, yep. 027 352 6402 or Form Pro at formpro.co.nz. Right. Um, brickbacks and bouquets. Got a couple of Yeah, you, you start yeah. off. Okay, I've got one, then you can go one, then I've got another one. So... You mentioned before about the odds of changing. I noticed lately the, the bookies have been, this is a, a bouquet of the bookies, they've been putting out the odds, even though no horses have been backed in, the odds are drifting out. So obviously they're putting up the odds, waiting, and if nothing happens, they're, they're drifting out the odds to a higher, higher percentage. So I thought that was good to see. It's sort of they're trying to be more competitive, I presume. It's pretty awkward, so... Um, yeah, well, I'll follow in there. Um, not very often the TAB get two bouquets on one podcast here. Mm. But hey, credit where credit's due. You've probably seen that uh, they chose to top up the Boys Get Paid Punders Club um, reef, well, um, return from the $96 that it actually was back up to the $100, so money back. So they chose to do that, mm. which was great. Um, I see there's been a bit of chat around the fact that uh, boys got get paid, Punders Club got access to a fixed odds Quinella bet and no one else did. And then the TAB must have then bet back into the tote pool and that's affected everyone else's dividend and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What a load of rubbish. What a load of rubbish. I can confirm uh, categorically 100% the TAB did not invest any money into the tote pool for the Quinella. What happened, it's pretty obvious if you stop and think, we posted that bet on Boys Get Paid, I think from memory on the Thursday. Yeah. 17,000 people saw that bet. A few of them obviously thought, yeah, we'll, we'll follow it in like they invariably do with a lot of Pundits Club bets. And only place they could follow it in on was the tote. Obviously, they didn't have access to the fixed odds. Quinella. So that's why the will pay, I think 20 minutes out was thirty, and the pool was at a decent size. And then uh, I think the will pay ended up $1.70 from memory. So no corruption, no people betting back in, no change of the takeout rate. Um, just a big storm in a teacup, really. I wouldn't make sense anyway, so I agree 100%. Right. Um, another bouquet goes to Love Racing, they, well, things in PR, uh, having going stick reports. A so going stick is where... They stick in a, a stick into the ground and then share it back. So it simulates a, a galloping horse on a track. And they upload those readings all around the track, similar to a panatrometer readings, but um, a lot more and all around the track. It gets uploaded and a map comes out of what the track is like all the way around the track. Hastings had one on Thursday. Um, it was nothing spectacular to, to view, but... Um, as the tracks get wetter and we've got the rain coming months, it's going to be a really good thing to have. Eight, 
eight tracks are going to be trialling. And um, good information because the Australians want that information. They do it for most tracks now in Australia. So great to see that going stick or the, the going map. Out of the meeting news on Love Racing, you'll see the Hastings going map. So well done. Um, the other thing was too, I know you've set up a, a Facebook page and about T. Lee, that he's just a terrific commentator. You know he's got a lot of stories to tell him. And you open up this Facebook page and, and um, tell us a bit more about what you're doing on there. Yeah, I just thought uh, the great man deserved a bit of kudos. He hates it, to be honest. He doesn't like <laughs> the limelight, but he accepts that uh, he's got lots of fans throughout the world. Yeah. So I started a Facebook page called, and it's just Tony Lee Appreciation Page. Uh, give it a like and a follow on Facebook. That'd be great. There's a few videos up there already. We'll do another one tomorrow at Trentham. Uh, we'll get some good stories out of Tony, hopefully. Stories that no one's never been told before. Uh, hopefully we can get one. We won't preempt it. Uh, but no, just an acknowledgement of his contribution. <clears throat> to the industry and how much uh, people enjoy his commentaries and his input. So no, it's, it's a bit of fun, bit of humor, which is always the way with Tony. He's always caught yeah. with, a, with a joke and a laugh. So yeah, Tony cool. Lee appreciation page on Facebook, uh, like that, follow it. And um, we'll keep bringing you a bit of content from uh, Tony. Yep. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. I'll be looking at that too. I'll put the link up to um, Right now, Nothing else before we go on to walking down memory lane? Um, no, well, I guess this kind of segues in. Yeah. The horse that really, um, probably the earliest call of Tony's that have, has been um, sort of immortalised, I guess, Castle Town winning his third cup when Tony said the dream burst into reality. So, yeah, the walk down memory lane horse this week is Castle Town, a horse that had 103 career starts. 16 wins, 2.6 million, I think, in prize money. But here's the stat that 2.4 million in prize money. The stat that uh, amazes me, Neil. Yeah. Of those 103 starts, how many of those were at the ultimate two mile trip, do you think? I don't know, half a dozen. Well, I don't know, seven or eight. Try 14. You're joking. So we know he had four, four starts in the Wellington Cup, won three yeah. of those. Yeah. He had three starts in the Melbourne Cup, placed in one of those. Yeah. I think he had two starts in the New Zealand Cup, uh, maybe three in the Auckland Cup and two in the Sydney Cup. 14 starts over two miles. Remarkable, really, isn't oh. it? I was there when he won his third um, Wellington Cup. You were there too, weren't you? No, that was the one. I was there for the first two, but I missed the oh. third one. Yeah, no, I was living in Nelson then, and my father and I were quite keen racing followers. We we caught the ferry across. And on the way on the way across, we um, started chatting to this chap and realised he was one of the Dennis brothers. He had a horse on the um, in the Wellington Cup. That something I forget what it was. <laughs> um, no, it was and it rained on the day at, at um, Trenton too that day. I think. Well, later after the cup, I just can't quite remember, yeah. but it hosed down at some stage. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I remember, uh, it's scary actually, I can vividly remember the day, and it's 30 years ago when he won his first cup in 1991. Um, yep, yeah, beat Shuzora. So, Noel Harris on then, I presume? Yeah, yeah, head bobbing finish. I'm just going to see if, I, I'm going to see if you're telling lies or not, Neil. Find this race, see if it tells us. Well, that um, third cup... Uh, no, nah, yeah, it doesn't bring up the field, unfortunately. Yeah. It's going to try and find the um, the the horse. Yeah, I'm sure they did have a horse in there. They've bred many a good stay. I have the Dennis brothers. But no, as well as uh, all those Wellington Cups, you forget he won a derby as a three-year-old. He won a Kelt Capital Stakes. He started racing as a two-year-old, won a 1,200-metre race as a two-year-old, yeah. racing right through to eight-year-old. So um, a phenomenal horse and... Um, yeah, just a marvel, really. And I guess we we kind of reminisce about these horses, and we might go, "Oh, it's not the same these days." But um, yeah, I I just think he was a horse that was just an amazing horse. And Paddy Buston, 
trained him. Noel Harris was the rider on the majority of occasions and yeah. is in the Hall of Fame, I think, from memory. And three Wellington Cups. Will we see a horse win three Wellington Cups again in our lifetime, Neil? Yeah, uh, we won't. Yeah, never. But, um, we'll talk about this before, about having, say, a farm where you have these famous horses that retire and so people can go and see them, I think, with um, interest in racing now, it'd be good to be able to go and see these horses. Obviously, he's passed on since then. Yeah, how long ago did he pass away, Castletown? Uh, let's see if it tells us. It's uh, a good question, that. But it'd be good to be able to go and just you know, see these horses and look them in the eye, and they have had replays of their races you could see and see the horse there and give them a pat and give them a carrot or something. Just over three years ago, December 2017, Gee, um, he passed one. away at age 31. So pretty good uh, life he had there. Oh. So, yep. yep. Placed, he was placed in two Sydney Cups as well. So his record it was amazing over uh, two miles. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, terrific horse. Rightio. Um, anything else you want to mention about Castletown before we... Shop. I remember as actually this is a funny story. I remember his uh, first Wellington Cup, and I was up there in the member stand up the top there, seeing this blooming annoying child, two of them running around. Like I, I'm admittedly, I was only what was I, I was only nineteen, but these two kids, they were about ten and eleven, real brats, I thought, and they turned out to be Bjorn Baker and Trent Busseton. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they've yeah. changed. Yeah. <laughs> no, Trent definitely hasn't, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. No, he's doing well in Melbourne too, isn't he? Yeah, big kudos yeah. to him and, and his partner, Natalie. Yeah, him and Natalie. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he, um, he certainly uh, has a go and he buys horses and he, he sets them for big races. And, you know, he won the Blue Diamond, what was that last year, I think, from memory? Yep. Yeah. And so, uh, no, he's, He's a good man, Trent. Good man to have a beer with, that's for sure. Yeah, no, true right, yeah. Oh, well, everyone, thanks very much for that. That was really interesting. I've got a horse for next week. It goes back a fair way, but it was a horse that I used to go to the LZ races to watch. He was just the horse that would attract me to go, like Levante. He's a horse you'd like to go and watch races. This is a horse that I would go and watch. I'll mention that next week. So, um, everyone, I want to see Goethe win tomorrow. We'll bring it into $4 by start time. And um, hopefully she gets up for us. Uh, you'll be cheering her on, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess we're, what we haven't touched on, Melody Bell obviously going for the record equaling Group 1 win, number 13 to equal Sunline. So a uh, bit of history could be made there tomorrow. So, And if she does that, then she'll be going for the outright record in two weeks' time in the Herbie Dyke at Tirapa. So that could be a big old day at Tirapa with Melody Bell and potentially the clash between Levante and Avon Targe. So yeah, gee, that'd if be you're a... in the region, get along. Yeah, meeting with going to. Anyway, okay, everyone, uh, good luck with the races tomorrow. Perfect day of racing and uh, good punting.